to go and uh, put them on GitHub again, so they will start to do that. I think the only th thing we need to do is to uh, decide how to tag issues on, on GitHub. But for this operation, I don't think we need so many resources, and I don't think it's a very huge change. Maybe we can let Vincent respond. I couldn't see who is speaking there, but uh, you're just off camera. <laughs> Yeah. React uh, here, but uh, I actually would like to hear Giovanni on this point because he's the main uh, guy doing the uh, uh, bug triaging, which is a huge work. And I don't think we really realize uh, the amount of work it represents to just do bug triaging. And when you say uh, there is no, uh, not a lot of work uh, starting from scratch, I. I disagree strongly with you because either you lose all the history and uh, you you will have more, a lot of difficulties to update the new uh, empty repository issue tracker with uh, issues with uh, which comes from the past, or, uh, or or you lose everything, or you have anyway some work to do, and this work is pretty huge, I think, and uh, I. I'd like to have Giovanni's uh, opinion about that, but because I think that's one of the main questions we have to ask as well about about I already commented this uh, the past two days with uh, Richard uh, Andreas and uh, Maybe because of uh, the way I think, I would see I would be very in favor of uh, cleaning house. This do not mean throwing away anything. Uh, it would mean in, it would means in this case to move to a new platform, move uh, recent stuff, QJS three stuff. Uh, eventually, also ask people to, to file, or we can do it, uh, if it's possible, automatically, the point eighteen tickets, and leave behind all the rest, but it do not mean delete all the rest. It just <coughs> means uh, leave it behind. And this uh, would allow us to start with a clean house, because our house in this moment, well, it's much better since last year we Change the server when Richard and Jürgen change the server, but it's still a messy, messy house. Uh, another option would be do what we, we was supposed to do last year. So do a mass mailing. I extracted a list of all the stuff and do a mass mailing and ask people to answer, confirm the ticket, or the ticket will be closed. And at least uh, uh, this will mean that from 3,200 3, and, and, uh, tickets, uh, maybe we can go down to 2,000. That would not be bad at all. Okay? But I would prefer the first option. I would prefer, also for other reasons, I would prefer to move on. Uh, I think that uh, we are growing as a project, and I like the idea to have everything in one place because it's more coherent. Okay. And I understand that uh, a common user, normal user, uh, do not, uh, um, are not interested in the code. Uh, so for them, the GitHub uh, ID would be just a way to, GitHub or GitLab, would be just a way to maybe go to the tracker or edit a wiki page for a, a developer meeting. But anyway, it will be all in one place. And from my in an image out, uh, an image that we give to the outside world, I think that uh, is better. Maybe this is a secondary aspect, but I, I, I like it a lot. My main concern with moving to GitHub is that it's not structured, so it's only tagging system. And I think within two or three months, we will have the same mess as before, or even worse than in my mind. <laughs> That's my main concern.
And actually, when I, I speak about keeping history or not, it's more who's going to do this job. So uh, that's, that's not a problem of saying, uh, OK, we start from clean and things will, uh, will get better because uh, we start from a clean space. That's, that's kind of ideal, but that's not what's going to happen. As you say, uh, people will start uh, doing more tickets and taking tickets from the old platform, uh, pushing them to the new one. Uh, we're going to have some, a lot of issues concerning uh, QGIS 2.8 even or whatever on the new platform because people won't understand how uh, how they separate both of them and who's gonna uh, clean that new mess uh, and who's gonna uh, do the job and when uh, that's something which is important and I have no answer for that except that it's gonna take a lot of time and much much more than what we think right now yeah well um, I I don't know if, if you know, but uh, I'm spending uh, a few time on the back tracker and, uh, and uh, QJS uh, compensate me uh, in, in a fair way. No, I, I think that it's in a fair way, but for sure that um, at, we are in a, in a moment, uh, in, a, in a place that uh, back tracker of QJS would give a one full time position. I'm sure about that. But this is a silly option, but we could create a QGIS3 project into Redmine, then you will have your clean, you both will have your clean sheet also, yeah. and we don't need to move. Is that an option or not? Well, if we arrive at the conclusion that uh, we don't have the workforce to move to another platform, why not? No, okay. Just an idea. Okay. Somebody else? <clears throat> Richard, that, that, that's, that's a good point <laughs> also for, for discussion. I think it's better to move to GitHub just to have uh, more people coming into the project, more easy to explain and everything. And I think if we have a more open platform, we have more problems, but we also have more people to handle the problems. So I think right now the red mine is only handled by a few people with a lot of effort. Of course, we will have a, a, a new, new problems on GitHub, but we might have more people to handle those problems. And I think the idea is, is that that we can ask for people to care about the, the issues, we can ask more people to review issues, to tag issues, and so on. But then, looking at uh, what Andreas is telling that, that, or asking, that in GitHub you don't have the finer structure that you have in Redmine. I, I'm not aware with what GitLab, but you, you just have the tags, isn't it? So it will be a lot of issues, just a few tags on it. So are you, do, you, do you still think that it's easier to manage? I think that like, there's mm -hmm. projects, there's projects, projects running on GitHub. Um, um, GitHub uh, uh, issues, uh, like Docker, for example, is running on GitHub issues. They have thousands and thousands and thousands of tickets in there, and they manage quite fine. I think like, it's just the organization is done differently. I don't think it's that you cannot organize the tickets. Um, and I guess I think GitLab and GitHub we could use for the same debating point here because I think they are not very well familiar with GitLab, but I think it's a similar kind of way of organizing tickets in GitLab to GitHub. So I don't think they should see this uh, organizing part as a major blocker. Um, uh, we'll have a different system, sure, we can, but there's also full text searches and other things that you can use to pull out uh, tickets and um, milestones and versions and um, uh, tagged, tagged searches and things that we could be putting onto a wiki page. And I think we can still come up with ways to organize things. Um, Tim, I agree with you on a technical point, but uh, on um, 
uh, more on a management level uh, all these things are to be organized we have to uh, mm -hmm. do uh, like uh, how we handle the bugs, what are the labels for uh, yeah. specific ticket issues. And that also will take time. I mean, yeah. we are not going to do that within a few days uh, and we are not going to be ready before uh, QG3 will be, will be out, I think. And so as for having new people just because we change tools, I don't believe that that's going to happen. Uh, that's not a problem of the tool. Uh, of course, it may be easier to use, it may be uh, more welcoming for new users, be it GitLab or GitHub, uh, but that's not the thing, uh, that's not the tool that's going to make new people come uh, in mass and help us. I mean, uh, to do the job that Giovanni does, uh, you have to have worked a lot on the on the project, yeah, it's not the it's not the only one, of yeah. course. But uh, uh, you have to be uh, uh, to to know the product. You have to know the project. You have to know the people, even to know how to triage bugs and all. That's that's kind of a huge work, and uh, uh, we're gonna have new users, of course. But it will take a lot of time because they, they are able to help and to uh, to be uh, contributors because uh, bug triaging is contribution. So, and I don't think the tool will will really make a difference just right now. So maybe we have an opportunity, but anyway, we take time to uh, for that to uh, uh, to to be efficient. So I don't uh, another time I don't see the urgency either. Yeah. So. I, we may start again later, uh, that's not a problem. Could I make a, a, a small hypothetical um, scenario? And that is that, uh, let's say we took some QGIS funds, say like 10,000 euros or something, and we paid somebody to do the migration. Uh, would we not be just as well taking that 10,000 euros and paying somebody to tweak Redmine to put the things in that people miss? Um, like for me personally, I want to see, I want to drag and drop pictures in and have an easier way to edit. So we know we can do markdown in Redmine and um, maybe somebody could just tweak it. Like, isn't it better to, to just think about just in practical terms, like what resources do we have and how can we best apply it to the problem without really trying to pre-pick the technology choice um, in front of, of the process? Because I think we have very circular discussions and everybody's position is very valid and very interesting and what have you, but when it comes down to it, we have a resource constraint of time and money, and, um, and we should just look practically at what those resources we have are and what can we practically achieve with it, um, rather than trying to uh, design the ideal system based on infinite resources, which is, I think, what, how most of the discussion we have at the moment takes place. So. Um, I'm just I'm just thinking we could like um, hire a what is it Ruby on Rails guy and tweak uh, Red Redmine to do what we want if if, if it's something lacking in Redmine. Um, is is it really a problem with Redmine or is this more a problem with GitHub? I think one other interesting or not interesting problem with that is that you cannot link uh, directly Redmine tickets in GitHub. Does anyone agree on that? Uh, there was somebody, uh, Jürgen, somebody wrote on the mailing list saying there's an API in Redmine and there's a way to do it. I didn't read, I didn't go oh. investigate in detail. Um, but, oh, okay. Uh, there's a REST API on Redmine that you can somehow connect the two together or something. Okay, then that hidden main point is gone, I think. I'm not speaking from experience though, so <laughs> um, I could be could be wrong in that. But yeah, so I think like, I mean, it's a, it's a, a very circular debate. We all, want to, we all want a nice platform to re report tickets on. We all have different um, things we're trying to get out of the system, but uh, could we not rather just say, uh, I mean, I tend to agree that like Redmine is fine, but if somebody comes to, uh, in this case, it was came to me, like, let's just look at the specific situation. Then he came to me and said, Oh, he started the message on the list and he said, I want to restart the conversation and I want to raise a vote. Um, as a community, we have to have a way to deal with people who've got suggestions or ideas and how we uniformly deal with it. I mean, the voting system is supposed to do that. I, I, I uh, saw your comments, Vincent, and I agree with you. The, the proposition of the vote was not great and I agree that I didn't handle it very well, but um, it's going to happen again that somebody says, I vote that we 
switch to uh, GTK. Uh, oh, it's happened in the past. Somebody said we <laughs> GTK. Uh, you know, and uh, we need a better way to deal with this. To say just sorry, no, or um, here's our here's our strategy. It's all planned out already. Like when things fall in place for the strategy, that's when we'll do it. Uh, Vincent, you wanted to say something. Bing. Can I say something, Tim? Sure. Oh. Um, since I remember, so I'm more or less part of this community since 2009 and 2008, and start 2009. And I, that I remember is the, probably the very first uh, not uh, decision that uh, will make uh, a few person <coughs> not, uh, not happy because there is no consensus. And it's not the prerogative of the PSC to have the right and the gut to take the decision after uh, a very wide discussion that because we, asked, we started to speak about this thing in person in Las Palmas, I remember mm -hmm. clearly. I thought we already taken that decision and then this vote was invoked. Correct. We in, in, in Bonn, we sat down with, uh, we had a very long, very complicated discussion, looked at all the ins and outs and weighed up like what's best for the project, like tried to put aside our personal preferences. And we decided Redmine was the way to go for similar reasons to what Vincent laid out. Like, um, um, and um, if, if we make a decision in the PSC, and then the community wants to overturn it, there should be a mechanism for that. At the same time, if the community is making a bad decision for good reasons, <laughs> um, or a good decision for bad reasons, or whatever the case may be, like we should be able to also say, um, look, we are in the PC, PSC, we're watching what's going on, it's very interesting, but this is bad, it's gonna be bad for the project. So um, we don't have in our statutes formal way to deal with this, but I think we should try to come up with something like uh, how to resolve these kind of disputes. Yeah. Go ahead, Vincent. Yeah. Isn't that if we can't uh, go to a consensus and uh, even with the PSC opinion on that, uh, it's probably because the problem is not uh, well posed and uh, uh, the uh, consultations are not shared by everyone. I mean, there are a lot of, uh, of things which are still unknown from, from now on on this problem. I mean, we don't even know if we can uh, uh, switch issues, uh, information, skip authors, how do we deal with uh, uh, user mapping from one platform to another. There are a lot of open questions. If these questions are resolved, then we can take a decision and I think we will reach a consensus with everyone uh, okay with that. But if we can't uh, now I think that's because there, there is a lot of unknown and uh, the only thing is to be able to uh, resolve these unknown issues as uh, then it takes time and effort and uh, time we uh, time flies and uh, we have QG3 we can't uh, we can delay QG3 for this reason that's, that's yes. one thing which is for sure uh, and uh, as for uh, resources, we may have resources, but we have to discuss it. And that's, that's maybe where the PSA could have a decision uh, in the sense of, uh, okay, we're gonna help making uh, the consensus and making the decision by uh, allowing some resources for uh, to resolve this and this question, for example. But uh, I, I, I strongly believe we can reach a consensus in the community with the PSC, but I also strongly believe that we have a lot of uh, questions and unknown which have to be solved first. So, <coughs> for, for the migration, I think uh, uh, Richard and Jürgen, they tested it in Bonn and they had uh, several issues, technical problems that prevented them to, to move. So one was the, the numbering system. You could not start with uh, ticket number 17,000 or so. But uh, GitHub forces you to start with zero or one, I think. That was one issue. And uh, then there, so you will have clash with numbers, with old numbers and, and new numbers. And then and the other issue was, uh, the other issue was that uh, uh, you could not migrate that many tickets we have. It uh, went into a timeout or a limitation from GitHub. Uh, and uh, the third is uh, you cannot export it again from GitHub. No mechanism. 
which I think is really bad. I mean, <laughs> if we are forced into a platform and cannot move, move away from it. Yeah, I, I understand and agree with Vincent and uh, the point that Andreas raised them. And my question is, uh, it is not bad that uh, we don't know if uh, we can really move away from the red mine, regardless that, uh, of the discussion that is being made. I think that we are not in a good spot in this sense. We, we should know if we could move away if, if we want to. And we don't know, really. Correct? No, I, I think we know partially. I, I, I think, yeah, Jürgen, uh, uh, um, help me if uh, I, 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 I speak wrong, but I think it was pretty hard to, to move stuff with history to GitHub. So that, that, so. Well, there, there's throttling for him, for him, for what? Yeah. And we cannot use the authors. That was the other thing that we actually cannot do. Uh, but the throttling was the main thing. And they also make, make ticket numbers and pull request numbers. So that's a clash already. But for now, I think we only have low pull request numbers and high issues at least the issues that are current in here. So that's not a big clash. I did some tries for, for GitLab migration, and I think the results are better than what Jeff achieves, so keeping uh, a lot of stuff, uh, authors, uh, URLs, maybe kept as well, IDs of issues, which is the main problem with uh, losing history as well. I mean, losing history, uh, keeping history aside, uh, also has the problem of uh, the references from the codes and from the commits to the issues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you will lose uh, the, the link between both of them. And that's, I think that's a problem because if you uh, go back to a part of, uh, of the code, you can see which commit has uh, modified <laughs> a specific portion and if bugs have been uh, raised on this, um, on this specific part of the code, you don't have the connection. And uh, so you can go and see what the problem was or to reproduce or not. So yeah, that may yeah. be a, a big problem losing history as well, uh, for even for developers, not only for uh, for bug triage. And we also uh, have some commits that only reference a ticket number and that's all. You don't have a more commit message that tells you what is, has been actually done. Yeah, so keeping uh, Issues IDs and issues URL for me is pretty important. And uh, as far as I tried with GitLab, we can do that, but uh, I can guarantee it 100% uh, right now. So, so if I understand correct, we are in a, in, a, in a spot where or someone do a lot of work trying to uh, figure if a migration is possible, GitHub or GitLab, or we stay in Redmine. Oh, good. To make the general 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 um, question of like, do you, do you want anybody who's a core developer right now spending hours a week, whatever, trying to figure out a bug tracking system and we'd rather have, and not only core developers, but anybody, I mean, uh, we've got so many other things that we could get value out of people's time in the project, like testing them just in the new release and things. And um, like it seems to be just uh, spending a lot of work to move us to another place where we have the same thing as what we have now effectively, which is a bug tracker to track our issues. Um, From my opinion, uh, we would need something like 10 to 20 days of work to, uh, to do something which is of quality and which can Guarantee the maximum of uh, of things not kept, but this is really difficult to evaluate because it's it, it's more like uh, progressing and seeing what problems we can face uh, from time to time. But from what I tried right now, uh, and I, it will be 
probably the same, more or less the same from for GitHub or for GitLab, and it, that's about the uh, the amount of work which is required for a, a basic uh, migration plan, or at least to uh, solve the unknowns. Did anybody uh, mention that there is a Redmine integration in uh, GitLab, or you can integrate that? No. Did you find one, Jürgen, or did you say, you, are you saying? Yeah, I, I, I found something. It's also on the wiki page, I think, that GitLab has a integration for Redmine or that you can link tickets and all that. The, the thing that, that apparently is also possible for GitHub, as you said, maybe. Mm -hmm. So we can integrate Redmine into GitLab. Apparently. Does that mean then you can file tickets on both platforms and they both appear on both platforms? Or? No, you would use the ticket system or Redmine as the ticket system for GitLab. Ah. But I think that's fundamentally what people don't want there. I think they want to use the ticket system of GitLab <laughs> um, because it's a more point and click experience for people to, to type their issues in. Or do I misunderstand? What? What's annoying me about the current situation is that you are always have to deal with linking one another and you have to put URLs into it and you cannot simply use dash ticket number or dash uh, pull request number. Yeah. But for everything else, I think Redmond is fine. But the other thing is that we cannot change that or at least before you said something about the API, I thought we could not change that in GitHub. That you can actually control where ticket links lead so that Redmine is integratable. Yeah, I need to go and check what uh, the person writes more carefully. I just saw him, he wrote something saying um, there's possibility to integrate the two with the, with the, with the REST API and Redmine but um, I didn't go and like try it out or look for a concrete example, so. Another thing that we should maybe try to clarify is like, what is the scope of what we want to achieve? Are we just looking for the bug tracker? Because, I mean, we mentioned it in the, in the wiki page. There's, um, if we're trying to give, like Giovanni was saying, like one integrated experience, it kind of hints that we should move everything onto one platform, like move all the Git repos and all the continuous integration and everything onto GitLab, which is again, I don't know, Vincent, if your 10 days was accommodating, 10 to 20 days was accommodating this or just purely the bug tracker part. Um, um, <coughs> perhaps you could just respond on that, Vincent. As far as ah. I, um, come to Denise. Ah. I think this is a, a lesser problem since uh, we don't have any a lot of projects on Redmine right now. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. No, uh, but uh, if we do migrate uh, the QGIS issues from Redmine to whatever platform, it will be the same to migrate the other project. So that's one point. Mm -hmm. So the job has to be done once and. Uh, the technical job and then uh, it's okay and then uh, going from github to gitlab is uh, is straightforward i mean there is uh, uh, the, the other way i don't know but uh, it, it doesn't matter in our case but uh, if you want to migrate a project from uh, github to gitlab there is an import button and it imports your code and your pull request yeah, so, but, but uh, all the uh, integrations uh, like the continuous, uh, continuous uh, like the uh, Travis uh, uh, thing uh, and, yeah, and, uh, except for the CI thing, and uh, speaking about CI, that's a, uh, a point which is important for us as well. And for us, I mean, uh, Auslandia, because uh, maybe you've seen the email about OSGO for Windows uh, build system, and uh, Hugo here has been working a lot on uh, having a full OSGO for Windows uh, compilation and build framework uh, 
so that we can automate uh, compilation and package uh, compilation for, uh, for Windows, and it's based on GitLab CI. So uh, that may be also part of the equation because uh, if we achieve to do that for uh, OSG or for Windows package in general, we can do that with QGIS. As for now, we, uh, we do this for uh, Windows platform, but uh, doing that for uh, Linux and replacing uh, Travis with GitLab CI is uh, something which will be probably much easier than uh, doing that for Windows. So uh, maybe an element of context as well. And uh, uh, from Auslandia's point of view, that would be a strong incentive to go to GitLab as well so that we can use uh, GitLab CI. And uh, GitLab CI is, is is much, much, much better than uh, GitHub, uh, which doesn't have one, and much, much better than Travis as well. Mm -hmm. um, Danny has joined us, so maybe we'll give him an opportunity, since he was very um, much the leader of the Let's Migrate to Git, uh, GitHub now kind of uh, uh, front. So Danny, would you like to, to um, give your thoughts? Hi. <laughs> yeah, hi. Um, connection is not really great here, but uh, I hope you hear me well. Is it the case? Yes, we yes. hear you well. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, I missed the beginning of the discussion, and I think everybody knows uh, my point of view already, which is basically uh, to summarize in two words, uh, red mine sucks. <laughs> and um, I hope to move away from it because uh, I don't like it to, to work with, especially if you're a, a programmer, because we don't have a nice interaction with the source code. I have no strong opinion um, uh, between GitLab or Redmine, uh, or GitHub, sorry. I don't have um, a very, like, um, uh, opinion towards open source for that case. Um, I would like to hear how um, GitLab uh, CI is better than Travis. If it's the case, then I think it's a good idea to see the, um, the whole migration in the whole, both the uh, issue tracker and uh, the continuous integration. And yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, Vincent, maybe you have some uh, comments about how, in which ways uh, GitLab CI is better than Travis? Hi, Hugo speaking. Um, actually, I don't know very well in details Travis, but uh, from my point of view, uh, what I see is that uh, GitLab CI is much more flexible from what I've experimented. And I think it comes from the fact that uh, well, it's uh, the, the GitHub and Travis um, uh, business model are to uh, make you uh, dependent on, the, on them, which is not really the case with the GitLab CI. You can host uh, your uh, compilation infrastructure. You can, you can own quite everything, so you're not totally dependent on a, a third party. Um, after that, some of the de technical details between the two systems, I'm not sure, but I would say that yes, GitLab CI is a bit more flexible. Well, what I, I would say for um, uh, GitLab versus uh, Redmi, uh, um, GitHub, it's, it's the different for a company than for um, an organization with many volunteers because I think that the fact that everything is owned on, on uh, GitHub infrastructure make it very accessible to everybody which is very a good point and uh, also the fact that many many body many many people are already on on, on github and while i understand and <coughs> think it would be better to be on gitlab uh, the pragmatic point of view um, for me would be to to stick to um, maybe github or or we have like oslandia is uh, um, has the power to do it or the organization would support it um, enough. But at the end, I would um, make the solution rely again on a few people, which uh, on, on, um, on GitHub, everybody has access to it. Maybe. <coughs> 
to know that uh, GitLab has a GitHub uh, authentication f feature. So uh, whenever you have a, a GitHub account, you can just uh, log in on, on GitLab the same way. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, you have the, the option to import uh, project from GitLab as well. So uh, authentication and uh, so imagine this a uh, uh, user that uh, contribute to the KGIS project but is don't have a, a repository big enough. He can always migrate for GitLab because he's importing the code in the in the rep repository of them and can start working in GitLab as well but uh, maybe to, to see a bit about what other people think um is the room um willing everybody is everybody willing to move away from red mine or i'm a bit the only one i think uh, if it's properly organized and proven that it's possible that i'm willing to move away but at the current time, it, uh, it failed. Uh, the attempt that uh, Jürgen and uh, Richard did, uh, it, it wasn't successful. And uh, uh, if it's possible to move away in an organized way and, uh, and also, uh, I mean, keeping what we have already in, and I'm willing to move. Yeah, I, I think uh, there is. Oh, sorry. Uh, is Regis speaking here? Uh, I think it's not um, a, a war between tools here. It's just there, it's a last minute move for a big infrastructure, uh, which is our, our data. If we push it all in GitHub, we already know that they do all they can so that we have difficulties to output our issues. It's not so easy. So I wouldn't have any objection to move to GitHub if we have uh, regular backups to have them out of GitHub, if possible. Uh, on the rest, I agree. Having one platform is quite better for everyone if we can handle that and check it works before doing the move. Yeah, I agree with, with what uh, Andreas and Regis said. Uh, just to add to the debate, I would say if, uh, if we decide to move, uh, uh, personally, I, I don't really have a strong opinion whether we, we should move. But if we decide to move, then I think between GitHub and GitLab, I would like that the uh, open source um, uh, dimension would uh, be taken care of. If we have the choice between GitHub and GitLab, I would prefer that we try um, as much as possible to choose GitLab. And but that's it. But then that means moving everything, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I, in, I, in the long term, ideally, yes, because I think tech, from a technical point of view, <laughs> the two tools are very similar. So I think we could find. Um, similar features in, with, with the two uh, different tools. Uh, so yeah, but I, then, I mean that that changes a lot the, the the work to be done to move away. Because if it's only the bug tracker, or if it's if it's the whole uh, continuous integration. Yeah, I agree. I agree that the the Travis system and so on will take time to move uh, to a different to to GitLab. To be uh, to be honest, um, but. Um, yeah, if we can try to do this, then it would be it would be better. But, and I think if we can do this step by step, maybe keeping Travis. Um, uh, I mean, having the tickets on GitLab and keeping Travis for the compilation, maybe it's um, maybe it's possible with a mirror system and so on. I don't know. My my step, 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 step. procedure would be to move. Uh, sorry, sorry, I'm hearing me in echo. That's quite hard to. But I um, I would propose to move tickets to um, GitHub, and because then I understand it's very easy to move to GitLab, and we could, whenever the bug tracker has moved to GitHub, start working on the continuous integration and move everything to GitLab 
if there is a decision from, I think it's two decisions, like moving away from Redmine and then what do we want, where do we want to go? And the, the step by step could be to go um, through GitHub. Did I understand correctly that we can import stuff from GitLab to, into GitHub? I, I, what I heard is that moving from GitHub to GitLab is very easy. No, but the other I, thing, what I meant was uh, we have that problem with th throttling and stuff. And if we move first to GitLab and that to GitHub, that could be a way for the migration that doesn't have this problem. Just a thought. And okay. that uh, earlier on, somebody said, I think that you can import stuff from GitLab to GitHub. Okay, so going through GitLab to go to GitHub. Just for the tickets. Yeah, I got it. That would be an idea too. Was that correct? I think we didn't discuss yet whether we want to have a self-hosted GitLab or a hosted one. So that's uh, quite a difference probably from the uh, amount of work it needs, maintenance, but also more freedom. You guys have an opinion on that? And we also could have Windows CI for QGIS uh, on GitLab. Right? Uh, you were talking about CI for uh, for GitLab, is that? Yeah. yeah. But, well, actually, I I personally don't think it makes a difference at this stage uh, between GitLab.com or uh, hosted GitLab. Technically, at least, it's just a question of resources and who's gonna uh, be in charge of the maintenance of the server uh, if we host it in house. Uh, but Jeff, you're right, saying that uh, for uh, the CI. Uh, we're going to need, uh, at least for the infrastructure for the Windows part, we're going to need some uh, specific server for that. Uh, right now, we have some Auslandia server. We can uh, work with that for a, few, for a bit of time, but uh, it doesn't scale. And uh, there is a question of uh, what do we need in terms of, uh, of dimensioning. And, uh, but at some point, if we go towards a fully integrated CI with OSG for Windows building and Etc. Etc. That will require uh, resources in terms of uh, maintenance and also in terms of costs. Uh, even if the cost is not very high, it's still uh, someone has to pay for it. I think the maintenance is the main problem. And uh, uh, yeah, we have we currently, I think, have a bus factor here uh, with uh, Jeff knowing the infrastructure very well. But uh, it's important that this uh, knowledge is shared around. Uh, people around the community and it's uh, automated at the most. So we can work with OSG as well uh, for, for this kind of problem, but it has to be uh, sought about. <laughs> so uh, we ran out of August. Okay, so Maybe can we summarize with the discussion is that uh, uh, I have one slight, slight reservation of summarizing these discussions is we are a very small group of people representing a very big group of people and uh, um, especially when uh, it's something very user facing, um, like I would prefer that the decision was taken more broadly than just in this room or in this virtual room. Um, but it seems like the summary would be um, to propose a phased migration from Redmine to GitLab, first starting with the tickets, then with the um, code itself. And well, then I guess the code and the continuous integration would need to come together. And then uh, with we'd also we also have some other things going on like uh, book Git hooks and things. That we need to consider. But um, it, it, if somebody could come up with, uh, like, if we made a, treat, treated it like a consulting job and made a specification, one of maybe some of you in this room could help us prepare a specification of what needs to happen and what the uh, uh, success criteria were. Um, 
perhaps we can uh, either just directly from QGIS funds fund somebody, Auslandia or whoever is interested to do it, to, to do the migration for us. Or um, uh, if we don't have enough funds in QGIS community uh, budget to um, do some kind of fundraising to say uh, we want to do this uh, in a proper way, here's the specification and uh, here's how much money we need. And we kind of park the issue until we actually have the specification and the funds. Uh, to do it. Does it sound like a reasonable approach? I mean, it doesn't address your, that, let's do something now, Denny, but it does mean that we have an orderly way of moving uh, from one platform to another. Uh, but is it is it clear for everybody that um, it's like <laughs> every issue should be migrated to GitHub, or what's the point there? Because I saw that it could be an idea to keep like the what was what was proposed is to keep Redmine uh, read only for the old issues and have um, a migration tool on demand to GitHub, which um, wouldn't make the throttle an issue. And um, we would start with the blank list. But does any everybody wants to uh, migrate everything? Uh, we we talked about this before you you came actually. Uh, it's not that uh, sorry, sorry. I, I would uh, want to migrate everything, but it's uh, that I I wouldn't I would find it uh, complicated to lose uh, some history and relations between uh, the code and uh, uh, the feature numbers and uh, that kind of thing. So I think what we are uh, if we start from scratch, we're gonna lose a lot more than what we currently think. But, uh, but maybe something which is difficult. But what we said also is that anyway, this work will need uh, bug triaging and a lot of work on uh, on issues uh, management. And uh, that's, uh, uh, as we were saying, uh, Giovanni <laughs> has, has done a lot, but there's still a lot to be done to clean uh, the issue uh, backlog and, and all. But that won't disappear anyway with a, a, clean, uh, a clean tool, I think. Okay. I don't understand whether we want to go to a self-hosted or not. Is that the main goal? Um, <laughs> a long-term goal? Or? Second question, and I think that's something which should come out of like somebody designing a specification to say, well, we need these particular functions and features, and we can only get it from self-hosting. Uh, personally, I would prefer that we use hosted infrastructure because that means there's one less person who has to maintain servers and and worry about our infrastructure. It's much easier if we can make use of GitLab's service provider. But if it if it's missing some feature that we really need, then that would be the typical point to say, okay, well, let's sell host. And will the hosted version be free for us as an open source project, or will we have to pay for certain features? But, but there is uh, quite some limit on the CI, right? With the free plan. And what we can do is host our own CI uh, runners and then uh, just use gitlab.com for everything else. But we can still extend the CI without having to, uh, to use GitLab server. Necessarily, so it's, it's what Hugo was saying. It's that it's pretty flexible. You can uh, just add a new CI server and uh, be it your own or still Australia or OSG or okay, wherever okay. you want. It's not a problem. Okay, thanks. So, are there any objections? Can we sort of like make a motion? That that would be the plan we follow, or is there somebody really set on like we must migrate everything now for this release? Um, Denny, I guess you're the one to ask, but maybe in the room as well. I know Giovanni also had some opinions. But, um, <coughs> if we put forward a thing saying we're gonna we're gonna draw up a plan, maybe we need some volunteers from in this room to um, help to draw up the migration plan. And that will just be a document or a wiki page or something like that, which explains exactly all the things that have to have been addressed in the migration process. 
and then we maybe can call for um, for either volunteers or for funding to do this in a stepwise way. Um, and rather than make try to make you like move to hub or with lab tomorrow, rather accept that it's going to take a year, you know, from now before we've moved to a new platform, but we've done it in a very rigorous way. I can't speak for GitHub, but at, at least Vincent gave me the idea that, that you already did a lot of work on Git uh, Lab. So <clears throat> I think we, for that, we already have a lot of information, isn't it? Mm -hmm. They can put it together and that yeah. you even have some, some, some setups of some tryouts. Yeah. We don't have them for GitHub, I think, but if somebody is volunteering, I think Matthias did some tryouts for, for, for GitHub as well. <clears throat> yeah, but that was in the beginning before we did, and it was really, really minimal, I think. Denise, or I'm, am I wrong? I think you're right. So Yeah, I, and, and that, that, that was actually <laughs> also the conclusion from, from the PSC meeting that, that we there's nobody who came with a firm plan, firm migration plan for GitHub, nor for GitLab, actually. And and now, well, at least Aslandi has a plan for GitLab, but everybody is free to, to bring in something else. Yeah. I think there's at least a, a starting point now. Okay, one last point. It's uh, again, if we go to a solution where we use hosted services, whether either GitLab or GitHub, I think it's uh, our responsibility to think of backups. Remember the GitLab big crash on data maybe one year ago? Uh, it could happen to GitHub too. And if we move our issues to GitHub, we must have something to. Uh, save ourselves that's all my feeling from the discussion in this room though is that uh, uh, we should rather just pick one platform if we want to use gitlab we pick it and we just decide to do the whole thing in a proper way and like not worry with if you know I, I, for, for personally, I'm not religious about GitHub. I'm being pro GitHub just from the point of view that I don't want to um, disrupt the project a lot, like by having trying to move many things once without a good plan. But if uh, if we've got a good plan, we know exactly somebody's child needs a bottle. <laughs> um, is it yours? Uh, is it coming from the conference? Um, yeah, if you've got a good plan in place for, for migrating and it's well documented and well described and we know exactly what's going on, it's not really about the platform, it's more about like knowing what the process is going to be. And uh, <coughs> if GitLab is doing everything, it doesn't, um, it, we don't even need to talk about GitHub anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> some, <laughs> some, somebody objecting or somebody has any other views or things to say? Martin, no? No wise words? <laughs> Martin is easy. <laughs> From what I, oh, I think so. Is it on? Hi. Yes, yes. Yeah, so from what I can envision now, the easiest would be to migrate to GitHub only the QJS3 issues for now running parallel a GitLab instance in time to uh, make the GitLab CI work at least until the Travis we can migrate from Travis to GitLab CI so baby steps because we don't have the resources for now uh, I didn't understood the issue about if we freeze Redmine why do we lo lose history so <coughs> this one or the two do not understand that. Let me comment, reply to you, but so in the discussion we had in the PSC, uh, Paolo, uh, not there with you now, but um, 
Paolo's objection to this idea was that um, if you if we're making a new issue tracker for version three, um, we still have the LTR release out. People need to file tickets against Redmine on, and then you have this problem that when somebody needs to file a ticket, they need to make a decision which bug tracker to go and choose, and how do we stop that people file three tickets on the two platform and two tickets on the three platform? And I think there's plenty of room for confusion and a mess to happen from this approach. So I agree with Paolo. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. But uh, I was saying just to migrate the current uh, free uh, issues and new issues for, we don't let any new issues for Redmine uh, to be created, but we, we allow in GitHub issues for 2.18. We just then, and then you're, in your proposal, then we the issue tracker again to the end. Then we have more yeah, flux because um, um, just, just mute your mic, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you get feedback. But, uh, you'll have more flux because now we need to tell people uh, tomorrow. Okay, everybody, move to GitHub. Please file your tickets there. And then in six months' time, we're going to say, "Oh, remember we told you to move to GitHub? Don't move there anymore. Move now to GitLab." I think it's like too confusing for people. It's better to have one message <laughs> to say, uh, here's the new system, it's gonna be here for the next 10 years and uh, forget the old one. And it's much clearer message for us to, to share to people. Would love that to switch to GitLab. So I'm favoring GitLab for instance, but I was just thinking about the resources. So yeah. Yeah, so I think in terms of the resources, it's simple. We don't do anything until we have the resource. We first make the plan, and then we find the resource, and then it will all fall into place. Okay. I will, um, I see lots of nodding heads. I will, I will write a very apologetic email to people who participated in the vote saying, sorry, your vote is being discounted, and I will try to explain in a good way why. And, uh, um, do we have uh, some maybe like plan for how we would write a specification? So perhaps we can simply write a wiki page on the GitHub wiki <laughs> um, uh, for now, <laughs> uh, just to put in all the requirements that we need and maybe some time or costing associated with each requirement, um, maybe in a big table, and. Uh, that we can just then have like at least a plan come into place and maybe we can all participate in doing that. Everybody can put their concern in there. Vincent? Yeah, okay. Uh, Denny, are you happy with that approach? Yes, totally. Uh, and Giovanni, you're another one who's well invested in this. Are you, is he still with us? Or does he run away? Um, I didn't um, understand uh, very well what was asked for um, for the wiki page, but um, I'm quite available to help if, um, if I can. So what I'm proposing for the wiki page is that we start a specification document, which is basically the migration plan, where we all can contribute any line item into, the, like we make a big table basically, and we can contribute the line item to say, for example, uh, we have a GitHub hook that gets, pushes a commit every time there's a PayPal donation. This needs to be taken care of. Somebody can put, uh, this is two days, work. Jürgen, maybe he's the one who wrote the hook, and say, okay, that's two days of work to do that on the new system. And we just put all the concerns that we have for, for what the new system should provide in a collaborative way. And then at, at, maybe we have to put a time cap on how long we have for this document or to decide when it's finished. Um, when that document is complete, we have a, we'll have a, a time budget which we convert into a monetary budget or we can ask for volunteers. I mean, we can approach it in different ways. So we could say, uh, Jürgen, would you mind to migrate your Git hooks over and um, uh, open, uh, open just, would you mind migrating your CI stuff over and so on? Um, can I add, can we uh, give some money for this research from uh, the ESC? Uh, I think that's also, we'd be fine that uh, the treasurer behind you can tell us if we can dig out some money out the chest, I'm sure.
You're still muted, um, Andreas. You need to. The budget yet because the, the discussion was still ongoing. But uh, I think, I mean, we have still some savings, and uh, of course, there is a trade off how much we can spend for bug fixing for QP3 and, uh, and that work. But uh, we can use some of the savings and uh, spend more money this year than we actually have as an income that's possible. I would maybe suggest that. Uh, Somebody from Auslandia who is very intimately familiar with GitLab could maybe just lead the process um, of requirements gathering, and but it still needs to be a community thing of uh, people putting their concerns into that table. So um, it's more just to, if we use funds to pay somebody to make sure the process happens rather than necessary to describe every single requirement themselves. that one of the companies, I mean, Auslandia could also say we do partially of our work for free and, and get silver sponsoring start too. So if they, and, and, and we fund it partially or whatever, can talk about it as well. Everybody's run out of things to say. So maybe that's a good time to resolve the discussion and I'm, uh, maybe uh, we, we can write up a summary and share it with the community, the wider community. Um, maybe I will make like a, a draft on a Google Doc or somewhere that we can all look at and put our comments in and then send out the, like the plan together or on the wiki page or wherever you like to collaborate. Um, I, I wanted to ask, uh, I, I send a wiki page. I to the people that were on the list on the, for the discussion. I don't know if everybody here was on that list, but should I send it around or should I throw that page away after saving it? Uh, or is it a good starting point? Let's put, the, let's put the outcome of this discussion in that page. Okay. Uh, I actually started writing a draft, so. Okay. 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 <laughs> so I, I, I will let, let it there, but, okay. <laughs> Jürgen Fischer, are you happy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Too happy, yeah, Jürgen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh well, it's nice to it's nice to have a good laugh at the end of a very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I will. I unfortunately forgot to press record at the very start of the discussion, but I uh, I have recorded the rest of it. So if somebody's really hardcore, computer guy, they can come and watch us talking about issue trackers later. That's it. Must be supper time in Madeira by now. So, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.